Over the last seven months, we've been conducting a research trial across 15 states in the South, Midwest, and North. Data from these trials will help inform farmers about planting, management, and harvest decisions on soybeans on their farm in the future. It seems like across the North and the South, we're seeing more erratic weather that could really impact soybean yield and quality. In the South, we've seen things like hot and humid weather that can cause yield loss and quality deterioration. While in the North, some things like frost and variable maturation commonly affect yield and seed quality. So with the changing weather patterns, things that have happened in one geographic location across the soybean planting area in the U.S. might occur in other places or they might not happen at all. In 2024, we conducted two different experiments across 15 states in the United States. The first experiment examined the use of desiccation products prior to harvest, while the second experiment examined various harvest timings. So the goal of both of these projects is to maximize yield, seed quality, and economic return. So some of the things that we're interested in measuring in these trials this year is obviously uh, first and foremost yield, but we also are really interested in the seed quality effects that we may have with our desiccation treatments or the delayed harvesting treatments. Some of the other data that we're interested in collecting would be things like lodging of plants or, uh, or green stem ratings at harvest. I'm here in South Carolina, but we also spoke to our researchers in Wisconsin and in Nebraska. Hi everyone, my name is Nicolás Cafaro Lamenza. I am assistant professor at the University of Nebraska. So in these two trials that we are evaluating harvest time and also desiccation treatments, we have two planting dates and three maturity groups. Here for Nebraska, we have a late April planting date that actually we did in April 25th. And then we have another one, second week of May, May 9th. So you have those two planting dates and then we use three different maturity groups covering the whole range uh, of conditions in which soybeans can grow here, in, in, at least in this part of the state. In Nebraska, from east to west, there are different crashing plants on the western side. There are not many soybeans, but the production is increasing, especially in irrigated areas. There are some plans for having a crashing plant here near to North Platte that that will potentially increase the area of soybean production. That crashing plant has some plans to probably start being built in, in about two years and any information related to the seed quality in the area, uh, production or issues that could happen with that quality of the seed of soybean are important also for the area. And in general, problems with green stem uh, syndrome are also important for Nebraska. It's in some cases, it starts happening and producers may have now some better information about what to do and, and how to handle uh, those situations. One of the observations across the maturity groups and planting day, we count the notes for the plants. We could see that the shorter maturities in the early planting, so the 1.4 got up to 17 nodes in the first planting late April, and then in the, in the later planting it was one more node, so about 18 nodes. And in the case of the mid and longer maturity, they got up to 19 nodes in the earlier planting and 18 nodes in the later planting. We are expecting that this result will bring some good information for farmers here in Nebraska, especially about the harvest time and the quality impacts of those decisions about harvest. Hello, my name is Sean Conley. I'm the State Soybean and Small Grain Specialist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. We're here at the Arlington Ag Research Station and we're right in the middle of our desiccant trial where we're trying to look at can we utilize the desiccants that are commonly used you know, in the southern production systems up here in the north to be able to integrate more cover crops and uh, be able to get our winter wheat planted in a timely manner. So desiccants are a very common uh, tool used in the southern part of the United States surrounding not just soybean production systems, but cotton as well. Now in the north, this is something that we're not as adept to using, specifically in soybean production systems. So we really want to caution farmers to be able to make sure you're applying it at the right time. And by the right time, we're saying buy about roughly our seven soybeans and later, because we don't want to be having any yield loss associated with the application of the product. We're also looking to see is what is the return on investment for this product? Is this overall a net positive return on investment for farmers in the northern U.S. production systems? 
We've really been pushing farmers to plant as early as possible. We're also pushing farmers to plant later maturity group beans. Now the challenge with trying to extend our growing season is then it butts up against trying to get cover crops or winter wheat established. That's where these desiccants come into play. Is this uh, an effective tool that we can utilize to be able to maximize our yield by planting earlier and extending the maturity groups you plant, but also getting them out soon enough that we can get high yields in our winter wheat and produce enough biomass through our cover crops by having a long enough growing season in the fall. What we've really seen this year is pretty interesting is on average, roughly, because we have different planting dates, maturity groups out here, we've seen about a week earlier timing when we could come out and harvest. Preliminary results are looking very promising for being able to apply uh, this product, uh, sodium chlorate, in our fields for desiccants in the northern United States. I'm Michael Plumley, Extension Specialist at Clemson University. Recently there's been a lot of interest in planting some of the earlier maturity groups in South Carolina to try to capture some of the yield potential that they may have. With that earlier maturity group soybean that we're planting, we've noticed or seen that we've had some issues with seed quality as they begin to dry down in the field. So we often recommend the use of a harvest stage after the soybeans have reached the R6.5 growth stage prior to harvest. So in 2023 that was a really Really almost picture perfect year for South Carolina in terms of a lot of our crops. We had very timely rainfall, very good yields across the state and crops and we actually initiated some preliminary work on this trial last year. In that specific trial we looked at three different maturity groups again, so a four, five, and six, and we had three different timings in which we desiccated the soybeans. So we had our first desiccation timing at R6. We had one at R6.5 and, and one at R7. And from that data, really what stuck out to me the most is that where we ended up desiccating a little bit earlier than our recommended growth stage at R6, we definitely hurt the yield on some of our soybeans. I'd say, you know, there were some variations, but on average, we probably lost about 10% yield where we, where we desiccated too early. So again, I think that just drives home the point for a producer that's wanting to use a harvest aid or grow some of these early maturity soybeans groups is that if you're going to be doing that we need to make sure that you understand what growth stage they're at when you start applying and that it'd probably be a little bit better to, to hedge on the side of spraying a little later rather than too early so we don't implicate our yield. A lot of the benefit in looking at all of the different geographic sites that we've had with the Science for Success protocol is really being able to define where or if there's benefit to doing this all over the country or in our soybean growing states. So what we see the results at least in the north might not be the same in the south and vice versa but at the same time we might do things in the north in this trial that have traditionally not been done but they have been done in the south and it may benefit the north but again just having such a large protocol that's being done so much data collected it really helps us get a very clear picture with so many replications and sight years as to what's really going on amongst our different maturity groups our different geographic soybean growing regions and that sort of a thing. I think just having this data, the whole big picture, being able to extend that information to our growers will really help them moving forward.